Hi, I'm Daniel Foley from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily community meditation, where today we're talking about milestones. We're going to be asking God to help us today to understand milestones in our life, the importance of them, how to create markers in time or memories that we cherish that lead us along God's path, to serve as markers or memories in time, and help us to understand the, the layout of milestones along our journey. Because I've been working on our workbook, our planner journal, for next year, for 2023. And I've been thinking about the checkpoints throughout the year and keeping track of those milestones. So we're going to believe, be believing that God's helping us to get that in place the way that he wants us as we move forward with 2023. So let's go through our filters for today. And then we'll get into our time of communion after that. So these filters are short things that I write at the top of my journal every night. As a way to help me stay in rhythm with God, to filter my decision making. And I like to start with the big picture vision. For me personally, that's Abundant Life Training Centers all over the world, making the body of Christ healthy and beautiful. Our program, the Abundant Life Blueprint, started about 10 years ago when Proverbs 13 22 inspired me to start creating manuals and lessons and teaching for every area of life. It says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And that verse got me thinking about what's the most valuable thing that we could pass on to future generations. So like I said, I wanted to develop wisdom and teaching and training for all the different areas. But when I got started, I had no clue where to start. So I began to seek after God. And he taught me a whole new way to live, a different way to operate my life. Now, it wasn't always easy all the time. I had to learn how to rest and trust in him. We had to learn how to do things his way. I went through some struggles this time, learning, at times learning how to walk this out. I just began to document what I was learning and the things that I was going through. And it turned into a series of books and courses and blueprints. And now partners that we have called the Abundant Life Blueprint. And the vision is to build Abundant Life training centers all over the world that are making the body of Christ healthy and beautiful. The thriving communities of people working together in unity, walking out these blueprints. And then this year in 2022, our filter has been the year of the beautiful land. In the Old Testament, God told the people he's going to give them the best and most beautiful land in the entire world as their inheritance. And that's symbolic for us of this rich inheritance that we have in Christ. This promised land with all the promises of God. And we've talked about this year, possessing those promises, walking in them and keeping them by filling up the basket of praise. Imagine two baskets on a balancing scale. On one side, you got a basket full of the issues and problems that we face. And we could fill that basket up with venting and complaining and pouting. Or we could cast those cares over into that basket. We could turn around. We could start filling up the basket of praise. Praising God for who he is. That he's our healer. He's our provider. He's more than enough. He's the God of all grace. The God of all hope. The God of all peace. The God of all comfort. He's light, he's love, he's our righteousness and our wisdom. He's the one who sanctifies us and make us, makes us holy. He's the Lord Almighty, nothing's impossible for him. And we can start filling up that basket of praise for all the promises that we have in Christ. Because for whatever we threw into that other basket of problems, he's got a promise for us. If we'll believe in it, we'll receive it, we'll learn how to rest and trust in it. He's going to help us to walk in those promises. And then this month in December of 2022, our filter has been paths beyond tracing out. In Romans chapter 11, it says God's paths are beyond tracing out. And this month we've been believing God to help us to lay out the milestones on his path. So it kind of fits into what we're talking about today, to lay out those milestones along the path. And then this week as we go around the yearly cycle, Think of the yearly cycle like a 360 degree view of who God is and all he's done for us in Christ. Different times of the year teach us different things about him. Give us different glimpses and reminders of him. In this time of year in December, it's often a time of major transitions. God's shifting things around. He's repositioning things to bring us to the next level. But to go to the next level usually requires some change. 
there might be the tendency to want to fall back into some old patterns. And I think that's where impor it's important to have some milestones along the way. Some remembrances along the way. Some memories that we cherish along the way. It's also important to give us some milestones. To give us something to look forward to along the path as well. So we can know where those, mar those markers are if we're going forward. Imagine you're driving on a, on a trip. You've got mile markers along the road to help you to navigate your life. So Heavenly the Father, we're asking for your help today. Asking for the milestones that will help us to navigate our lives with. To give us cherished memories, to lay out the path, to show us and help us how to navigate. And to help us to implement that into our program. The way you intended it to be. We're going to take communion over this in just a second. But why do we take communion every day? Jesus says, as often as you do this, remember me. The Apostle Paul says, every time you take communion, we're proclaiming the death of Jesus. And in the case of a will or an inheritance, nothing happens until you prove the death. So in a way, communion is like an activation that sets in motion all the benefits of this new covenant. So as we take communion over this today, we're believing we're receiving God's help with these milestones. But it's also important we take communion the right way. If we look in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the Apostle Paul says, So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ. Eat and drink judgment on themselves. That's why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we're judged in this way by the Lord, we're being disciplined so that we will not finally be condemned with the world. So I want to take some time Something I feel like uh, God's been giving me a nudge here. Making sure we take some time to examine ourselves before we take our communion each day. So this is something we've been working on to put into our workbook as well. So I want to start with examining ourselves. In what ways, think back over the last day or the last time, since the last time you took communion. Let's take a moment just to, to honor and to celebrate the ways that you did walk in the light. Ways that you put God first, that you were choosing to do, do things God's way, honest and transparent, present and full of joy. You're walking in the fruit of the Spirit with love and calmness and peace, kindness, goodness, self-controlled. You were being gentle and patient. You were functioning in faith, positive and adaptable, believe in God, trusting in Him. You were taking action and persevering. Maybe you gave yourself or other people grace. When they miss the mark, we're bringing our best rather than just going through the motions. We're assuming the best about people. Just take a moment to kind of honor and celebrate the ways that you are walking in the light. And let's take a minute to go through. We've all got buttons that can be pushed in our lives. Emotional buttons that try to kick us out of the light. But the good news is, is those buttons can be reprogrammed. God can reprogram them. It's nothing's too hard for him. But we got to be able to recognize those. One of the biggest symptoms, we have a lack of fellowship with God or a lack of people. We feel like there's a strain in a relationship. That's a cue. We got kicked out of the light somehow. Maybe we're snapping at people. We got stress or frustration. We feel just the heaviness on us in an area like you're carrying the weight of the problem or you got excess pressure on you. Maybe you're lacking self-control. Maybe there's a, a, a time where you had some harshness or anger towards other people. Feeling depressed or down, complaining, venting, being ungrateful, boiling in our mind, meditating on the problem, worrying, prioritizing money over people. Maybe we retaliate at people. We give them the silent treatment. We avoid people when they wrong us. You got that broken fellowship. Maybe we're focused on lack and all the problems rather than what God promised. Maybe we're feeling unfulfilled. 
Because in the light, there's fullness in Christ. I feel like there's something missing. Let's take a moment just to think back. What are the ways that we walked in the light? What are the ways that we didn't? And let's bring those areas where those buttons got pushed. We got kicked out of the light for whatever reason. Let's bring those to God. Let's bring them into the light. We're going to turn it back around. We're going to reprogram those buttons right now. We're going to start with forgiveness on three levels. So Heavenly Father, we just ask that any buttons that have been getting pushed in our life that are causing us to not walk in your ways, to not walk in the light, that you would forgive us for that. We receive your forgiveness and we forgive ourselves. We give ourselves that same grace that you gave us. We're going to choose today. We're going to walk in forgiveness with other people. If we need to humble ourselves to restore a relationship, to get back into fellowship, we're going to do that. And Father, we thank you that what you put within us, that that seed that you planted within us is more than enough. It's got everything we need for life and godliness to reprogram those buttons and help us to respond to whatever it was that was pushing our buttons in a beautiful way graceful way and we're asking you to help us to grow and to cultivate what you put within us so that we respond to whatever was pushing our buttons in a beautiful graceful way and we're asking for your help with that today father we thank you that the night jesus was betrayed he took the bread and said this is my body broken for you do this in remembrance of me. We'd all missed it. We'd all gone astray. We'd all turned to our own ways. And God laid upon Jesus the punishment that we deserved. And by his stripes we've been healed. He was crushed. He was destroyed. He was smitten by God. So that we could be right and holy and perfect in his sight. All through his one sacrifice. And God raised him up from the dead and seated him at his right hand. And he raised us up together with him, made us sit together with him. And communion is a celebration of our union with him. Being joined together as one with him. So Father, I thank you for this bread. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread, you can take your bread. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. And it's the forgiveness of sins that releases us from darkness. And transfers us into the light. Into the kingdom of your dear son. He's a great king. His blood washes us and cleanses us, gives us a fresh start in life. We get to walk out this day today connected with you in a covenant relationship with you. So, Father, I thank you for this cup and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have a juice, you can take a juice. <clears throat> All right, so some practical application of this. In our health and fitness, there are milestones as well. For example, maybe it's being able to do a push-up on your toes or a real pull-up, lifting a certain weight, running a mile in a certain time. There are certain milestones in our fitness as well. And so Heavenly Father, we're asking for you to help us to lay out that path of the milestones in our health and fitness as well. But I hope this has been helpful for you today. If you'd like to be a part of what we're doing in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.